This is your 28storms.com tropical weather update for Monday evening, June 3rd, and the focus continues to be a tropical wave now moving into the southeast Gulf of Mexico. The hurricane hunters are tentatively scheduled to fly into this area of disturbed weather tomorrow afternoon to see if the low has become better organized. With the broad area of disturbed weather slowly becoming better defined, the National Hurricane Center is starting to run more models on this system, and this is the latest look at the 18Z run of the tropical model suite, which is not very accurate, but it's still worth looking at from day to day. And as of right now, the consensus takes the area of low pressure over the Florida Panhandle within three to four days. Furthermore, the 12Z run of the GFS Ensemble members are a bit more towards the east, but they still take the area of low pressure in a general northeast fashion, with the final landfall out across the Big Bend of Florida and then up the southeast into the Carolinas. The intensity models are not highly reliable, especially when a tropical low is in its infancy development stages. However, they do show a very gradual trend towards maybe some slow development into a minimal tropical depression or tropical storm just prior to landfall. The final visible satellite animation of the Gulf of Mexico for the day revealed that the tropical disturbance is very slowly becoming better organized. We can still see that much of the disorganized convection is displaced along the eastern side of the tropical wave with a very broad area of low pressure that encompasses much of the southern Gulf of Mexico and the northern half of the Yucatan Peninsula. Until the westerly vertical wind shear begins to relax, we will continue to see more in the way of convection displaced well to the east, more so over western Cuba and southern Florida and we are already starting to see the trend of more in the way of steady rainfall beginning to work its way from southwest to northeast into the Florida Keys and the Miami Metro. Here is a look at the enhanced infrared satellite view of the tropical system and you can see a lot of the rainfall and cloudiness overspreading much of central and southern Florida and this is going to become more of an issue day by day and the National Weather Service will likely have to issue flood watches for parts of the region here within the next couple of days. Finally, as you can see here, based on the water vapor imagery, you can really see how unfavorable much of the Gulf of Mexico is for tropical development at this hour. We still have plenty of dry air. As a matter of fact, there's probably more dry air across the Gulf today than there was at this time yesterday, and the wind shear has not relaxed. As we turn to some of the latest graphics from the University of Wisconsin, First, starting with the low-level vorticity product, you can see, as confirmed by the visible satellite imagery, that we still have a very broad area of circulation, and until this becomes a little more narrow and better defined, it's really going to struggle for this disturbance to really get its act together. And as we can see based on the streamlines, the wind shear values are still 30 to 40 knots across much of the central Gulf of Mexico, as you can also see based on the color representation. Regardless of classification, as we've been saying the last couple of days, the main threat will be the risk of heavy rainfall and isolated flooding across central and southern Florida. The latest hydraulic outlook from Miami says that area-wide rainfall accumulations of 4 to 8 inches are possible, with even higher localized amounts over the next five days. Flood watches may become necessary during the midweek period, so interests are encouraged to monitor the latest forecast as this situation unfolds. The latest seven-day precipitation forecast from the Weather Prediction Center is also still outlining much of central and southern Florida with well in excess of six to nine inches of rainfall, with the track of the low also moving up the eastern seaboard near the Carolinas, where we still see a swath of four to five inches of precipitation. As for the Big Bend region of Florida, that's going to be the biggest wild card in terms of the precipitation forecast. Of course, if the low track's a little bit more towards the west, then the precipitation totals in this area may be a little bit higher. As we start to take a look at the latest 18Z run of the American GFS model, we can see that the broad area of low pressure will remain disorganized for at least another day or so, but it does start to organize the system into a very weak tropical depression or maybe even a subtropical storm as we go into early Thursday, and it looks as though the biggest timetable for the most rainfall and a potential landfall would be Thursday into the early morning hours on Friday, just to the north of Tampa, Florida. And then as we can see as we work our way later on into Friday and early Saturday morning, the low continues to track up the North Carolina coast towards Cape Hatteras. The steering forecast philosophy remains largely unchanged as we do have a weakness in the Atlantic subtropical ridge over the Florida coastline. And although the ridging will temporarily build back here in a couple of days, we will see a reinforcement of troughing over the southeast United States, especially as we work our way into early Friday. You can see that the 582 decameter line starts to move into the Florida panhandle from the north, which is an indicator that the trough is moving back in. So it is highly unlikely that this system will be able to move west, say, potentially beyond Apalachicola, Florida, as the trough will help to steer this storm more towards the northeast. And over time, it will eventually begin to merge with the trough. Therefore, there is the chance that we could be seeing a subtropical system merging into a non-tropical trough as it starts to move up the east coast. 
Outside of the flooding threat, we're also going to have to keep an eye on the very outside chance of a slight tornado here or there. As we work our way into 48 hours, the GFS model is increasing the surface to 500 millibar bulk shear values, which is a sign that the vertical wind shear values will start to become more favorable for a weak and brief tornado, and this will remain to be the case as the tropical low slowly approaches. As we take a quick look at the 12Z run of the ECMWF model, and for reference this is the Gulf of Mexico, as we go into 24 and 48 hours you can see very slow development into a little bit of a better organized surface low with a minimum central pressure of around 1006 millibars in the model run. And it looks as though Thursday is really going to be the day if this system is going to become a classified tropical cyclone. You can see that the system is really getting its act together in this particular run. But then as it starts to make that turn towards the northeast, you can see that it will start to interact with the trough. The southwest vertical wind shear values will still be rather high. So either way, we're going to be looking at a rather lopsided system with much of the convection and rainfall on the eastern side of the center. And then as the system begins to interact with the trough, we may begin to see secondary surface low development right along the Georgia coast, and this will be what continues to move northeast up towards the mid-Atlantic states. The last forecast model we will review tonight is the 12Z run of the UK Met model, and it is worth noting that the UK Met is a bit more towards the west compared to the GFS and ECMWF solutions. By day 3 or 72 hours out, we can see the very broad low trying to organize to the south of New Orleans, but you can still see that the convection in this model is lopsided to the east of the center, and beyond 72 hours, the UK Met is likely showing more of a turn back towards the northeast as well. But interest across the Florida Panhandle, all the way west towards Pensacola, are still advised to keep a close watch on this system, just in the event that the forecast does change to some extent. So that's all we have for you this evening. Again, don't forget to check out the 2013 Atlantic Hurricane Season forecast issued by 28storms.com if you haven't gotten a chance to do so just yet. And of course, you can always follow us on Facebook and Twitter for rapid weather updates.